Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son came into the world to free us all from sin and death. Breathe upon us the power of your Spirit, that we may be raised to new life in Christ and serve you in righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading comes from Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 1 through 14. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophecy to these bones and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and you will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophecy to the breath, prophecy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord, when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Romans. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus. Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and you're going to go there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of this world, but those who walk at night stumble because the light is not with them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us go also, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. And Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? And she said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house consoling her saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. 
When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I never thought about this question uh, until this week. I wonder how old Lazarus was when he died. Mary and Martha plead for Jesus to come. They want him to come and save Lazarus' life, and Jesus seems in this gospel lesson by his absence to be callous about their suffering. It is four days, four days, before Jesus arrives. He waits four days before showing up, and the sister's reaction is predictable. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. You had the power to do something, and you did nothing, nothing. Jesus tempted Satan to turn stones into bread. Why, why not turn some stones into ventilators? How about taking this seriously? I, I get their frustration. I get their frustration because I am tired of callous attitudes towards suffering. And I, in fact, I take that back. I'm not tired about callous attitudes about suffering. I'm furious about callous attitudes towards suffering. I'm furious. I never thought ever that I would hear a leader Anyone in a position of authority like a politician or someone who has the ear of millions of American citizens like a, a media personality or a news anchor even remotely suggest, seriously suggest, that by virtue of age, men and women ought to be willing to sacrifice their lives for the sake of staving off the possibility of extreme economic calamity. Not here. Not in this country. At what point did, a, did we as a people decide 
that the value of human life was quantifiable like that? At what point did we decide that, that senior adults, senior adults have done all the good that they can do, so much so that they are now less valuable than younger people? When did we decide that the value of the economy was worth more than the value of human life? I get the fear of not having enough. I get that fear. I get the fear of something as dreadful as financial ruin. If my parents were children of the Depression, then I guess that makes me a grandchild? of the Depression, and I know how hard it was for them, because I know they told me stories, and I remember the stories, and I know how hard it was for them, because it changed their lives forever, and it changed how they raised me. I know because in my house, when I was growing up, my mother counted the slices of bread in a loaf, and God help you if you snuck one. I know, because in my house when I grew up, when a shirt wasn't fit to wear anymore, it became a dust rag. And when it wasn't suitable as a dust rag, it became a grease rag. And when it wasn't suitable as a grease rag anymore, it was ripped up and used as kindling. So I understand the fear, and I understand how it shapes lives, people's lives, but I also understand the value of community and the power of community to overcome even the greatest, most disastrous hardship. And Jesus gets that too. His, his four-day absence wasn't because Lazarus was so old that he didn't have any value to the community anymore. It wasn't callous indifference to human life. It was, in fact, just the opposite. Lazarus' death was the way Jesus demonstrated God's absolute undying, unquenchable, total commitment and love for human life. Every human life. And this is God throughout the ages. God says to the prophet Ezekiel that the dry bones are the whole host of Israel who say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. And then God breathed new life into something old and dried up, so much so that it was cut off, so much so that they thought they were dead. In the face of all of the uncertainties that we are facing right now, that we are experiencing right now, God is present with us. God is breathing new hope and new life into us because human life is worth it. It is precious. When we could have said, we're dead and we don't have hope anymore, well, we figured out how to do worship together. And when when we could have said that we're dead and, and we have no hope, we figured out how to connect with one another in new ways to continue to have community together. And when we could have said we're, we have no hope that we're dead, we figured out how to feed hungry people. God's love for us 
God's commitment to our lives, God's promise of new life to us, changes our lives forever. It does. Not death, not a virus, not, not the inability to gather in person. None of that stops God's love for humanity. None of that can or will stop God's Holy Spirit from continuing to drive out the fear of personal, individual scarcity with the promise of strength and hope found in Christ's community. When Jesus cries out, Lazarus, come out! He is crying out to us too, calling each of us by name. Do not let this time of social isolation be a tomb. Do not think it is a death sentence. For in the face of all of it, God is bringing life to us, hope to us, love for us, always.
turning our hearts to God who is gracious and merciful. We pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of life, bind your faithful people into one body. Enliven the church with your spirit and bless the work of those who work for its renewal. Accomplish your work of salvation in us and through us for the sake of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of life, you love the world you have made, and you grieve when creation suffers. Restore polluted lands and waterways. Heal areas of the world ravaged by storms, floods, wildfires, droughts, or other natural disasters. Bring all things to new life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of life, show redemption to all who watch and wait with eager expectation, those longing for wars to cease, those waiting for needed equipment to treat patients diagnosed with COVID-19, those seeking election and those in dire need of humanitarian relief. Come quickly with your hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of life, you weep with those who grieve. Unbind all who are held captive by anxiety, despair, or pain. Fill us with compassion and empathy for those who struggle, and keep us faithful in prayer. We pray especially for those who are ill or recovering from illness. Sidney Miller, Janet Natt, Russell Dyer, and Dawn Parks. For those who are awaiting surgery or recovering from surgery. Guy Deal, Lynn Thompson, and Claire Blake. For those suffering from dementing illness and isolated from their loved ones, Harold and Betty Shepherd. And for all those we name before you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of life, we give thanks for opportunities for St. Mark's to collaborate with our community in caring for the needs of our neighbors, especially during this time of crisis. Strengthen our ties with other local congregations, agencies, and services. We pray especially for Margaret Stowasser, who is heading to New York City for 21 days to help their health care providers. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of life, you are our resurrection. We remember all those who have died and trust that in you they will live again. Breathe new life into our dry bones that we too might live with you forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. According to your steadfast love, O God, Hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Take a moment and share the peace with someone you are close to, either in your mind virtually or if you are physically present, safely share the peace. Let us pray. O God of justice and love, 
We give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need. Awaken us to the needs of others. And at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. God, our peace and our strength. We pray for our nation and the world as we face new uncertainties around coronavirus. Protect the most vulnerable among us, especially all who are currently sick or in isolation. Grant wisdom, patience, and clarity to healthcare workers, especially as their work caring for others puts them at great risk. Guide us and our leaders as we consider how best to prepare and respond in our families, congregations, workplaces, and communities. Be with us in these days when gathering together as often as we would like is not possible. When we must be apart for reasons of safety, we trust that you surround us with your sheltering wings. Encourage us in connecting as we are able, reaching out to our neighbors in need and being persistent in prayer. Give us courage to face these days not with fear, but with compassion, concern, and acts of service, trusting that you abide with us always. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.
peace-loving God and loving your neighbor. Thanks be to God.